What's up guys, welcome back to another video. Today I'm gonna to be reviewing my USD Aeon skates. I've been skating those for a little bit now and uh, developed some opinions. Um, I've also noticed things that other people have said as also, I've also, um, I guess, noticed things that maybe people haven't said. Um, so yeah, I think it's time. Anyway, I've also added a new intro and my newest outro as well. I'm pretty proud of them, so let me know what you think. Um, but let's get down to the skate. Uh, here's a couple clips of me riding it. start with the liner this is the uh, I guess it's a my fit second skin liner um, and this is the Nickelomax signature I guess uh, SDA yeah, on 60 um, so the liner is the best liner I've ever had but I've only ever had like stock liners so I don't really know too much to compare it to um, it's got double lacing which I find takes a long time to put on uh, just because you're tying two different laces and it also has hooks around the boot um, Love the hooks, but I'll get to those in a minute um, so Overall it just takes a little bit longer to put on than like another skate like Razor's SL or something like that um, But it's really sportive. I really like it. I haven't laced the boot to the liner Yet I'll probably give it a shot, but it works just as well without it, so I haven't had a need to do it. Um, but if I feel I need to, I probably will. Um, let's get down to the cuff. Um, the cuff, I have no issues about the cuff. I did notice that the cuff bolts came loose after like the second um, session and then as well um, after like the fourth session. Um, so now I kind of check it regularly, um, but most of the time I check it, it's not loose. Um, that don't really, really happen twice. Um, <clears throat> the buckle is plastic. I do wish that it was a metal buckle. Um, I have seen some Aeons with metal buckles and I wish that they did that with this one. Um, but they did not and it's not the biggest issue. I just, I find the metal buckles to be a little bit sturdier. Um, the plastic ones get a little bit loose and are a little bit tedious to reattach and they get loose right about here. So. Yeah, more of like a 
annoyance than a real issue. Um, I did cut the, I guess this part right here, um, which it's marked so that you can cut it. Let me see if I can get a good angle on it. You can see these little lines right there, um, which I guess they're perforated, so you can cut them to wherever you desire. I cut off two little notches, um, and that seemed to be perfect for me. Um, but that's it as far as any cuff modifications. Um, as far as lacing the boot goes, um, the boot itself comes with wax laces. The liner laces are not wax laces, but the boot um, itself is. And uh, those are awesome. Um, it also has a pair of hooks, which I guess are gonna take less time to attach than maybe like a Velcro strap. I, I really don't know, but um, I guess he wanted hooks as opposed to Velcro straps. While I do love them, they do have their flaws and I probably would have preferred a Velcro strap now knowing those flaws. But when I first got it, I was like, no, nah, hooks all the way. But here's the issue. Um, so that little hook right there, I've had to bend back a number of times. Um, and each time I bend it back, it like opens up the hole that the, I guess, screw is attached to, um, which then makes it kind of loose, which is really annoying. Um, and it doesn't really take up that much space. It's just, I was trying to learn um, 180s off of, I guess, uh, big old gap thing and I uh, kept falling so yeah that was fun it's not so much the 180 that was the issue it was just jumping off the giant piece and committing to it but yeah anyway I fell a lot and I wiggled it loose and then I had to do it again uh and then it came loose from an unknown reason because I had a session and I didn't even fall that time and it just went back and that was really annoying um so yeah, that, that part's tedious. I probably would have preferred a uh, Velcro strap as opposed to that. Um, let's see, as far as the support of the boot goes, as you can see, I'll look at my messy desk. As you can see, there's a lot of open space right here. It, it's really not that much bigger than other boots that I've seen, um, but I, when I first put them on, um, it felt like there's a big gap around like the forward position of my, um, my foot or on my shin and um you know with the sway i thought that i had a lot of forward flex it's actually more heel lift than forward flex that was bugging me um but uh yeah i had that issue um and it gave off the illusion that there was no support because there was so much flex in that area but the boot actually like hugs my foot like a sock especially around the heel um the heel is a little bit narrower than this way um so it kind of just felt like I was wearing socks. So that took a second to get used to because like I said, the illusion is that there's no support, but in all reality, it is probably the most supportive boot I've had, period. Um, as far as boots that I've ridden, um, Sways, Colts, and uh, SLs, uh, that's it. Um, but yeah, once I got used to that, I guess just trusting the flex and trusting that it does got you, you're locked in. Um, then it was fine and I progressed more on this boot than any other boot. Um, another big thing that I noticed right away was how light it is. Um, really, really, really light. I found myself over jumping things that I didn't need to purely because it was light. Um, which that took a second to get used to. Um, so that's that part. Let's move on to the elephant in the room, which is the sole plate. Um, I'll give you a little view of mine. Primarily, I ride metal things, I guess, which slide kind of slick, uh, as opposed to curves and wedges and stuff. Prior to the Aeon, I pretty much only preferred curves and wedges and things like that, uh, just because I had the most experience uh, with any sport that I do, um, scootering, longboarding, skateboarding, things like that, um, grinding ledges, and I prefer that feeling. Uh, I was not used to rails that much and uh, angle iron that much, um, which is funny because the skate park that, you gotta go, that I go to the most is primarily metal objects. Uh, but I wasn't used to that. So 
I heard that the boot sole plate wears down pretty quickly, so I try to stay away from cement objects and just new metal objects. Um, and that actually put me out of my comfort zone, um, which was really, really nice. But I did find that it didn't wear down as quickly because of that. Um, I did notice it slowed down a little bit. Not a lot, but a little bit. But I've also not been riding a lot of cement. Um, I find that it actually helped me progress. Um, as opposed to being a hindrance. Um, so if you have a super fast sole plate, you don't need to go that fast into jumping into your grind, um, which was something that I kind of relied on. And uh, this boot kind of forced me to go faster, but also got me comfortable going faster because I do slide and I do slide pretty fast. I just don't slide as far, um, which is confusing to explain. Um, but I would, I would believe that if you were to do a lot of switch ups and things like that, that it would probably, you'd probably want a faster sliding still plate. Um, but for me personally, it helped me progress because it got me to go faster into my grind. I still use wax, just not any more than I usually would. Um, but yeah, I, I like that. Um, so especially if you're going down an object, like down a rail or down a ledge, which is something that I've been trying to push myself to do. And when you have a really fast sliding sole plate, um, it's kind of hard to push yourself to that limit because you slide like ice. Uh, this doesn't slide like ice. Uh, it actually has more of a, I don't, I don't know how to describe it. It's not slippery. It's more like slide, slidey rather than grindy feeling. Um, and I think that a lot of that is because you are significantly lower to the boot to the point to where you can feel the grind a lot more as opposed to like a sway. Um, you feel like it's boot sole plate, which is like a giant log underneath your feet or a rock underneath your feet. Um, and you can feel the sole plate. Um, I guess you just, you don't really feel the sole plate. You basically sway, grindy feeling, Aeon slidey feeling. But I think a lot of that comes because you feel the grind more. Um, you feel like the grind is connected to your feet, which I think gives me a lot of confidence because when I hop onto a rail, I immediately know where my feet are. Um, if there's too much space in between um, my foot and the sole plate and the rail, um, then it takes a little bit of my confidence away. Not enough to deter me that much, but enough to like, like it and wanna keep that. Um, so, I like the sole plate. Some people don't, and I understand why. They're probably better than me, <laughs> um, but I like it. Um, another thing is I've always wanted to ride flat, and I tried the Kaiser Element 260s, and I love the H block, but I didn't like metal frames because uh, I kept getting heel bruises. I didn't like that. Um, this allowed me to have a very similar, if not the same, groove and ride a flat setup, which I really liked. Um, yeah, I tried to ride Anna Rocker one time for one session and that lasted maybe like 20, 30 minutes. Also, that was the last video that I made and I put it on like different Facebook groups as well. And I got a lot of cry emojis, sad faces, angry faces, and very little likes. And I'm confused. Did you not like that I tried it Anna Rocker or that I didn't like it? I don't know. Anyway, um, so no, I did not like it as an anti rocker boot. Um, I found that if you have it in a rocker, yes, yeah, some things are easier, like um, backside, uh, backside front sides, backside grinds. Yeah, um, some things are easier like that for me, um, and royales were easier, but. Um, in order to have this big of an H block, you have to push your wheels out pretty far. And that gave me a lot of knee pain and it was pretty instantaneous. Um, just right off the bat kind of knee pain. And I was like, all right, I'll power through it for this session and then I'll be done with it. Uh, but I really didn't like it. Um, yeah, I mean, it had a little bit of fun, but I really didn't like it. And then as far as the groove goes, uh, I think the groove is not as like steep as I would have expected, or maybe as like secure as like a 
Kaiser Fluid 5, which is a frame that I'm used to. Um, not overly used to, but I've come to like that locked in feeling. Um, so when you ride it and a rocker, it kind of takes away that locked in feeling you kind of slide about. Similar to what I believe a freestyle frame would feel like, which I have not tried, but yeah. <laughs> um, so I didn't like it and a rocker. I actually relied quite a lot on the wheels in the center. Um, plus, once you have that mobility, you don't really want to give it up. Um, and if this boot gives me the clearance, then that's the boot I want to ride. Um, speaking of mobility with the flat setup, uh, what I found is I'm more comfortable approaching a rail, um, not even hopping onto it. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm just approaching it um, with a flat setup as opposed to an anti rocker setup. Because the anti rocker setup, you gotta like approach it. You, like everyone said this term, but you feel like you're on train tracks, you approach the rail and you have to jump and then do a complete like whoosh, motion, which is very like rigid to me. Whereas like on a flat setup, you have the mobility to kind of like gradually approach it and then hop onto it, which I like that gradual approach. It gives me more confidence in what I'm about ready to do, uh, which confidence is key. And as far as the wheels go, I have a love-hate relationship with this wheel. Um, I love it because it's super grippy, um, but mainly grippy for like the first four sessions. Um, and I like the round profile because I found that it was really good for cornering, especially on vert, as well as um, toe rolls. I recently really like toe rolls, so um, I found that it was really good for that. Uh, however, I did notice that um, it, it kind of got in the way when doing grinds, in particular Royales. Um, I did see an eye roller boot video where he was talking about using a bullet profile wheel. I think he used Looney Zooms, which I'm looking at. Um, and then I saw Michael Witzman or Weitzman video where he rode 55 millimeter wheels on his um Entante? i don't i don't know what frames they're called and i'm probably gonna butcher the name anyway so i'm not gonna try uh but he rides 55 millimeter wheels so i'm like okay maybe i want to try the 55 because it gives me that sort of like square profile but it's smaller but i also really want the 60 millimeter because that extra couple millimeters that extra five millimeters does help as far as like speed i think um and it's super narrow so maybe it'll help i don't know anyway if you have a preference, let me know and I'll probably give it a shot. Um, but uh, yeah, and a rocker was not the way to go. Different profile wheel would probably be better for grinding um, or maybe even like a split durometer. So like softer wheel on the outside and then harder wheels on the inside. That might be good too. Um, I kind of like the soft wheel just because when you're jumping off things, it helps absorb that chalk a little bit for me, softens the impact. <laughs> Um, speaking of impact protection, uh, it, you do have a pretty decently large shock absorber that doesn't do much in your heels. And I really thought that it was going to do a lot. It really didn't. And um, so also between the bottom of the boot, so I guess the frame and the sole, and then where your liner goes, there's this little piece of plastic material really 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 thin and it kind of just separates your liner from the elements of the ground um i took that out and i put now that like i said it protects your liner okay so maybe don't take it out but i did and i put in fp uh king foam and sole in replace of that um i did that because rather than putting it inside the liner because i don't know how to cut it and you just get a mess big area of shock absorption um, I don't think that those are like the squishiest insoles in the world, but for some reason, because science, they absorb shock better. Um, another thing that I tried for a day, um, I didn't keep them because they weren't mine, um, but the Razor's SL insole uh, shock absorber thing, uh, it's really big, about the same size, and it's substantially squishier. Um, and yeah, it's really comfortable. I don't know. Um, if I'd ride it forever because sometimes I feel like the squishier it is the less power transfer you have 
and I didn't really do that much testing with that shock absorber. Um, I really just checked to see if it fit, and I really like that shock absorber in the Razor's SL. The Razor's SL belongs to my buddy, so I didn't take him. Um, but uh, yeah, I would really like to try out that shock absorber um, in this boot. I think it would do pretty well, especially for gaps and things like that. Um, but overall consensus, uh, this is an awesome boot. Um, they make a couple different iterations of it. Some that have Velcro straps, some that have even like a soft top upper. Um, and then some that have outer skins like the Sandcroft one. Uh, and some that have 45 degree more ratchet strap ones, as well as some that have metal buckles um, and even maybe different liners. So there's a lot to choose from. Um, the boot itself is really, really, really freaking good. I didn't try slicks, so if you're gonna ask me if I did that, I didn't try it because I just liked the way that the sole slid. I understand that some don't, I do. Um, but yeah, this is my favorite boot as of right now. I really like it and you should try it. And there it is. As always guys, like, comment, subscribe. Let me know what you think of the outro and intro and uh, have a good day, bye.